am really, really, really excited. We got uh, the one and only Janai Thornton on the show. And uh, thank you for coming on the show and taking time out of your busy schedule because I know your phone is blowing up because everybody's suffering financial difficulties during this time because all these, uh, you know, businesses are closed. And uh, we're just happy to have you on this morning. And uh, I know you got some some new information uh, on Paycheck Protection. Uh, pro, uh, uh, so, yeah, Paycheck Protection Program and loans for small business owners. Uh, good morning. Hey, Ricky. Good morning. Thank you for having me on this morning. Yeah, no, no. Thank you for coming on. Go ahead and drop that knowledge on us in your own way. Okay, so this is really, really important information for all those small business owners, all the entrepreneurs. So I don't care if you own an in-home daycare center, a food truck, a transportation company. Um, I don't care if it's just you. You want to be able to take advantage of these programs. So the first one you mentioned is called the Paycheck Protection Program. And what the SBA is doing, you can actually get a loan that can cover your expenses up to 8 to 10 weeks. But you have to use the money for payroll, your business rent, business utilities, business mortgage interest, and health insurance. If you use the money for that, you don't have to pay it back. The SBA what? is going to con- yes, the SBA is going to convert that loan into a grant for you. And so, but the key is, and what's really messing up a lot of people here, Ricky, is although you can go to sba.gov to get the application, you have to submit the application to your bank. And that's where people are really getting confused. And listen, you can borrow up to $10 million. You can get up to that. So again, if you've been impacted by the coronavirus, this is money that could potentially be free money if you use it for the expenses that I talked about. Or maybe, Ricky, people have some other type of debt. You know, maybe they have some auto loans. Again, this is all business expenses. They're not personal expenses. If you have some other business debt and you're going to use the money for that, then that money just stays alone and the interest rate is only 4%. Really? But- um, this is wow. all available. Isn't this crazy? But literally, you can get this money. I submitted the application for my business um, yesterday. I need people to get moving because the key here is this is like financial aid, y'all. This is first come, first serve. Right. If you wow. wait, the money's going to be gone. So the forms are online right now at sba.gov, but you have to submit it to an SBA-approved lender. You don't submit it directly to the SBA. So, again, that one is called the Paycheck Protection Program. Paycheck Protection Program. Now, there's one more I want to mention to everybody. This is called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Now, for this loan, you can borrow up to $2 million. Um, You get 30 years to pay it back. The interest rate is only 3.75%, and you can use this money to, um, again, pay your business expenses. Now, the cool thing about this loan is um, even if you don't get approved for the loan, you can get a $10,000 grant that you don't have to pay back. Really? Wow. So literally, you got to go to SBA.gov today, though. I don't need people to wait because, you know, a lot of times people who look like us, we don't know. And we're the last Mm -hmm. ones to sign up and get going. You cannot play because, again, it is first come, first serve. So I need all the entrepreneurs, small business owners, go ahead and get that money. All right, hold that thought, y'all. We got Janai Thornton on the phone. If you want to talk to Janai Thornton, you can call right now, 866-9-RICKY, 866-9-R-I-C-K-E-Y. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, we got Janai Thornton on the phone uh, giving out uh, financial information. And thank you for the Paycheck Protection Program that small businesses uh, owners uh, should have, uh, you know, need to know about, you know, where they can uh, get that money before it runs out. Uh, Eva, you say you had a question. I have so many questions, Ricky. It's not even funny. But I know we only have a few minutes. So I'm, I want to speak for all of those out there that are renters and trying to understand what is going on as far as paying rent. Rent was due yesterday. It's late right. by the 5th. And mortgage is late after the 15th. So what I have heard about in research was this moratorium. So a lot of cities specifically, and then some states as a whole, have granted a moratorium, which basically means you, you cannot evict nor foul foreclosure for unpaid um, housing bills. And I know New York City, San Francisco, Seattle, Santa Monica, cities in Colorado, Miami, and the list goes on, have those in effect. So 
What do you do when you hear these three different terms that are used incorrectly? It is forgiveness, forbearance, and deferment, which are three very different things, which will end up putting people in financial strength if they don't understand them. So can you explain what a forbearance is in comparison to a deferment? Okay, so first let's talk about this whole rent issue. So it is your responsibility as a renter to talk to your landlord, whether it's an individual person or a major company. And so you're right. From a federal perspective, what the federal government says, if you live in federal subsidized housing, number one, or if you have a loan that is federally backed, it is subsidized by the federal government, you automatically get a 120-day break. You don't even have to worry about it. So for the rest of us who don't live um, in federally backed housing or have a federal um, backed loan, what you have to do is you have to contact your lender. And then you need to say, hey, this is my situation. And you need to be clear on what the commitment is. Are they allowing you to, because forbearance and deferment that you're talking about, it means that you don't have to make a payment. The question becomes, during the time that you're not making a payment, Eva, number one, is interest adding up, yes or no? Right. And then number two, when you have to begin making payments again, do you get to just go back to make your normal payment or are they expecting a larger payment on the back end? So I'm hearing different things. I'm hearing people say, hey, Janai, my experience is they're going to allow me to tack my rent onto the very end of my loan or my mortgage right. payment onto the end. And then I'm also hearing people say, hey, my lender is saying at the end of this 30 or 60 days that I'm requesting that they're expecting a large payment. Exactly. And, and so, and then it's funny. I mean, who's going to have it? Ain't nobody going to have a large okay. payment. Thank you, Ricky. That's no my point. Going who is going to have, have it? it? No, and most people aren't going to have it. But you know, the other flip side that we all have to keep in mind too about this is, are the people that we're renting from, particularly if you're renting from an individual, because you remember they are paying bills too. You know, they're paying the mortgage, they're paying the insurance, they're paying the taxes. So for those landlords out there, um, I need you to go ahead and request from your lender the opportunity not to have to pay. You're going to have to do the same thing because if people aren't working, how are they going to be able to pay rent? So you're right, Eva. I'm grateful that most of the major cities in the country have said, even in Atlanta, we're not doing any evictions of any kind right now. Any evictions or foreclosures. The offices are literally closed. Yeah, because... And the government, who has time for that right now? What government agency has the resources to be evicted and so for right now. The last oh, no. thing, go, go ahead. the last thing really fast is utilities, your, your yes. lights, your gas, your power. Yes. I've noticed, I've got notices from my different utility companies saying that they are not doing any disconnections yes. during this time yes. until July 1st or to a right. further notice and right. your failure or inability to pay, they will help you out with it. You just have to call your utility companies and let them know. Uh, And I'm glad you mentioned that, Eva, because that was going to be my next point is, yes, I've heard the same thing, too, where most of the major utilities, you're talking about water, power, and gas, are saying, we know most of you cannot pay right now, or a lot of you can't, but you have to contact them. It just doesn't happen automatically. You're going to have to contact them and either, A, make a partial payment or request not to make a payment at all. But, again, you have to make that, whether it's your student loans, car note, credit cards, utilities, you have to make that initial request. You get your ass off here, all that money, housewives paying you. I'm sorry, Janine. No, no, no Ricky, this is so time. real. So Everybody trying is trying. Like, you can't pay your light bill, Eva? No, what I'm saying is that I got a notice saying that if I couldn't, they would help me out. And so I just want all of our listeners to know that even though this is hard financial and economic times, if you reach out to these different lenders and these different companies, you can get some relief right now. And I just want to make sure everyone is clear on that. Right. Absolutely. And to your point, though, I need everybody to be very patient because you think about the number of calls that they're receiving right now, the number of emails that they're receiving right now. So everybody's really overworked. So, yes, make a list of everybody who you owe money to and literally one by one you need to make contact.